Welcome back. In the first few videos, I drew conventional initiating device circuits and I would connect heat detectors to them. And I asked you to imagine that a heat detector was just a switch that would close. It was a normally open device whose switch would close. So if you look on the left, on the back view of this diagram, I drew it like this with a little armature that would close when the device went into alarm. And I said that that wasn't exactly how it worked, but it was a fairly, fairly accurate way to think of it because when a heat detector goes into alarm, it's basically two pieces of metal closing, shorting together. So a switch was was good enough to imagine or to explain how a, you know, a zone works, a conventional zone works. So we'll wire this up real quickly. Um, this is, again, the back view. So the yellow is one of the screw terminals. The, the orange is the other screw terminals. We're going to wire it to a fire alarm panel, but we're not going to spend a lot of time on it because we've already done this a bunch of times at this point. So we got positive to one side, negative to the other. Assuming this is either the last or the only device on the circuit, we'll just put the resistor here. So now all the panel sees is a resistor. Okay, so that's how you'd wire it up, and that's what it would look like from the back. This is this white thing here is a picture of a heat detector. It's a pretty common type. There's a bunch of different types, but that's it's a pretty common type of heat detector. Um, and right now we're discussing how a fixed temperature heat um, a fixed temperature heat detector works. So if you go over to the left here, there's kind of a lot going on. Um, Again, the, this is the side view over here on the right, so the, the yellow is one screw terminal, the orange is the other screw terminal. And let's look at what they're connected to. So the yellow one's connected to a piece of metal here, which is connected to a spring. And that spring is pushing down on this metal plunger switch. And the plunger switch is not touching this orange ring around, you know, the, the, the ring that's around the plunger switch is only touching the other contact. So if we were to say we were to hook this up to a panel like it is on the left and follow if, if any current can flow one side of the circuit would be going through all this metal through the spring and to the plunger but it's not touching the orange. The orange is hopefully you can see by the drawing that I, you know, I tried to make it clear that that was not actually touching the other contact. So all that's touching is down here this, this plunger which would not be it's not touching the other side of the circuit. It's not th that would not be a conductor. So that's just a little plug. The pink thing on the bottom there is like a little plug. So the pink thing is connected to this disc down here, and it's connected to it with this fusible alloy. And an alloy is just a combination of different types of metals, basically. Um, but this alloy has a property that it will melt at a certain temperature. So there's a few different types of fixed temperature heat detectors. Um, the most common is one that uses an alloy that melts at 135 degrees Fahrenheit. And then the next most common, you'll see sometimes in kitchens and stuff like that, is at 195 degrees. And there's charts on what the ambient temperature should be in the room when you use each one. Like I believe it shouldn't be over 100 degrees when you're using a 135 degree heat detector and so on. But you know, you'd look that up um, for each application. But just to get the idea of how it works. So if this, if, if this were to heat up, there's a little heat collector here, so it's, it's basically a metal ring on, on the bottom that would heat up, and when that got to a certain temperature, that alloy would begin to melt. Once that alloy melts, it's going. this plug is no longer going to be held in place. So this spring is pushing force down onto that plug. Once this alloy melts, it's going to allow this plunger switch to connect with the orange ring which is connected to the other terminal and essentially these two are going to be shorted together so that's what's going to cause your increase in current you know it's going to be essentially going right through there and it's going to put your zone in alarm so that's how the most common type of fixed temperature heat detector works um, the next type is what's called a rate of rise uh, heat detector and you can see in the title at the top here I put rate of rise and fixed temp and I'm going to explain that uh, in a minute but let's um, let's focus on the rate of rise. So on the left I drew the, the panel again, but we're not going to go through the trouble of wiring it up. You wire it up exactly the same way. I use the same picture because from the outside they look basically the same. There'd be some labeling on the outside that would explain that, you know, that would say it's a rate of rise or it's a fixed temp or whatever it is, but they basically look the same. So if you look internally on this rate of rise, the way this thing works, focus on the, the, the top part up here right now. Don't, fo don't focus on the spring on the bottom and all that stuff. So you have the two contacts again that are pretty close together and they're surrounded by this metal, this flexible diaphragm. And what happens is if heat were to 
if it were to if the air temperature were to heat up around this device the air inside this chamber here would heat up and that you know when air heats up it expands so it would be it would be pushing on this diaphragm and once so the air is kind of pushing in every di in every direction but it's it's pushing on this diaphragm which would cause these two to um, to short out and usually rate of rise heat detectors go into alarm when there's an increase in temperature of at least 15 degrees Fahrenheit per minute and that's just you know that's just the properties of the metal that um, you know how quickly they bend and what happens is this the if it were to slowly increase there's a little air vent in this detector and so the air is going to you know be it's going to be surrounding the heat detector but some will be getting out through the air vent and so if the temperature increases faster than it can escape through this air vent that's what's going to contract this diaphragm and push it up on the contacts and short it. Now most rate of rise heat detectors are combined with a fixed temperature device as well and that's what's on the bottom here. So this works kind of similar to the last one. There's this um, this this would be kind of your switch the, the, the I guess this is brown plug down here is, is your switch and there's a spring that's now forcing this switch up and I called it solder here but it's that it's that alloy you know solder is essentially the same thing which would melt at a given temperature if it's 135 degrees that's what's holding this in place right now as soon as that melts along, along the bottom the spring is going to push this plug up it's going to hit this diaphragm it's going to push the two contacts together and that's what's going to cause your alarm those are the two most common types of heat detectors you'll see and it just depends on what area you're using them in and what application you want the next kind is called a rate compensation oops I went too far a rate compensation heat detector and what that means well let me explain what thermal lag means because in the first heat detector that we use there's something called thermal lag and that is the amount of time that it takes a heat detector to go into alarm once the air temperature reach, reaches the alarm temperature so in other words if the if the air in a room were 135 degrees it would take the heat detector is not going to go into alarm the second that the air reaches that temperature because um, you know it takes a while for the heat collector to, to warm up it takes a while for that heat the metal to actually warm up that temperature and so on so to help compensate for that there's this other type of fixed temperature heat detector called a rate compensation device and the way this thing works is there's these two inner expansion struts which I labeled and these will expand at a certain temperature so say this one's rated for 135 degrees when it gets to 135 degrees this is going to expand and these two contacts are going to touch but if there's a rapid increase in temperature this outer shell this would be like a metal tube that this whole thing is surrounded in this outer shell will also expand as temperature increases so if there's a very fast increase in temperature even before that temperature can get can penetrate the shell and stretch out these struts this shell will expand this way pulling these together and the expansion such struts would still excuse me would still be um, expanding as well and coming together but the the outer shell would be pulling on it which is you know going to stretch these out even sooner and it's going to allow these two to shut and that's kind of um, that's how it compensates for thermal lag now the last type is more common in addressable heat detectors which we haven't talked about yet and that is a thermistor and a, a thermistor is basically it's like a resistor that whose resistance changes with heat so if something heats up the internal resistance uh, the resistance of that device will change um, and so then there's onboard circuitry that will process that you know electrically and, and it'll process that change in resistance and you know communicate with a panel and let it know when there's alarm when there's not a lot of times you'll see this is kind of an example of a heat detector and the thermistor would be kind of right in the, in the center there but um, um, these are most common with addressable devices but you'll also see them on on some conventional heats and more commonly on smoke detectors that employ a heat detector as well so there'll be a little thermistor on a, you know a smoke detector and then it's a combination device to detect both smoke and heat and you'll see that as well um, I think that's where I'm gonna stop this one and I'll see you in the next video